make sure you check out our sponsor, Shields. If you do it outdoors, they're going to be able to equip you from hiking and biking and fishing and hunting and climbing and shooting. All those ings that you do outside, they're going to be able to hook you up with premium brands and great prices. There is a link down below and over on my link tree. We thank them for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, Dustin here and we are continuing our precision rifle. It's like, kind of like how to be a sniper deal. We did a lot of technical stuff earlier, but now we're going to start sending more rounds down range. We've got Ben with KRG and then Nick with Zero Compromise Optics. Go check out that earlier earlier videos where we give the whole rifle rundown. It's so nice. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor Sodic KRG rifle. The Zero Compromise Optics, really top of the line. We have Thunder Beast uh, suppressor and bipod here. And uh, Nick's been uh, instructing long range shooting competition 15 years or so, right? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of, a lot of competition shooting. And yeah, I've worked with uh, my National Guard unit back when I was in the military teaching our soldiers uh, fundamentals of marksmanship specifically awesome. with a ar-15 m16 platform type of stuff as well as pistols so got a lot of background so i've asked nick to bring me in as a new student and uh i'll try to do some stuff wrong on purpose and, and yeah and then you guys who maybe have never gone out to the range got some formal instruction it'll be a good um a, a, a good start for you to get a free lesson now there's a whole bunch involved we're gonna just try to just pack in some of the basics absolutely and yeah. uh it sounds good and then i'm gonna you, join you join me and you try to mess with them too do it See do it I wrong do it. <laughs> Cool. All right. Ready to jump on the map? Absolutely. Let's All get right. after it. And imagine drawing a line from the target to your rifle, just to the inside part of your right foot. Hmm. So you're drawing this imaginary line. Okay. And when we get down behind the guns, what I want you to do is essentially come down to your knees. Your knees should form a perpendicular line to that direction. Okay. Then when you lay down behind the rifle, your shoulders should be perpendicular to the direction that we're firing. And the reason that we're doing that is because we want to have our body as straight behind the rifle as mm -hmm. possible. Okay, Everything is hips, shoulders, um, right behind the gun. So let's go ahead and uh, drop down into position here, kind of there, shoulders. And so we're not cockeyed off at an angle, but we're trying to stay straight behind the rifles as much as we can. So tell us why we don't do the old Civil War knee to your chest thing anymore. Right. Uh, so one, one of those techniques was because they're using slings, they're holding the rifles up by their arms. We have bipods now, we have rear support bags, and part of that knee up to your chest was because you needed to angle that rifle so that you had both hands holding on to the gun, one under the forehand so when and you the have other a front on the stock. Support. You can stay straight behind the gun, but that, what that's also going to do is give you better recoil management because you have your entire body behind the firing system. Acquire a sight picture, but what I want you to pay attention to is do you feel like you're smashing into the gun or do we need to raise the bipod height a little bit more due to the lay of the ground and the target? height. I feel everything good. feeling okay? You're not feeling like you're smashed too much into the ground? Nope. Nope. Solid. Okay, awesome. So before we send any live rounds, we're going to do just some dry fire drills. What that's going to do is give us a check because we're looking for crosshair wiggle on the target and things like that. So one of the things that we talk about with fundamentals of marksmanship, number one to me is your breathing, mm -hmm. okay? So for breathing, when we're shooting precision rifle, we wanna have a consistent spot when we break the trigger. So it used to be where you breathe in and you let halfway out and then you'd kind of hold it and then you'd take your shot. And then the next time you'd breathe in, you let out about half. Well, your halfway point is gonna vary from one shot to the next. So what we do is come to your natural respiratory pause. So if you think about your normal breathing, you go in these little cycles, you breathe out, and your body is naturally kind of paused in that lower part of your exhale point anyway. Mm -hmm. And you can hold that for two, three, four seconds, and your body doesn't really get taxed at all. But that is a very relaxed chest kind of level playing field for, for your body. And it's at that point that we want to time our trigger break when we get there. You aiming at that bird too? <laughs> Not that I'd say it. <laughs> okay. okay, when you were doing that, were you guys noticing any reticle jump at all on the target or did the reticle stay 
right where it was. I wasn't paying at attention before. until I started to press. Okay, all right. So next aspect for fundamentals of marksmanship is what we call natural point of aim. Okay. And that is where does that rifle want to point? If you were to actually close your eyes, take a couple of breathing cycles and think about relaxing all of your muscles, and you open your eyes again, and you look through that scope, it should be pointing still at that target. So start if it, by if, pointing at it. Yep. Okay. So if you can close your eyes, take a couple uh, breathing cycles and open your eyes again, if that reticle is deviated off target, then we're actually going to adjust our body position or the rifle to make sure that when we do that again, that the rifle and the crosshairs are pointed at our target still. All right, it may have drifted an inch uh, to one o'clock. All right, so what you would end up doing then is just adjusting your body or the rifle so that you can do that again and everything stays Kind of shift like that. Yep, I was just gonna ask you to shift your hips back over to the right. Nice. Is this Good to go? Still on the bullseye. Okay, next thing recoil management or follow through, mm -hmm. right? So one of the best things to do when you start uh, teaching and instructing and watching other people shoot is you notice some beginner shooters, when they fire, their finger immediately comes right back off the yes, trigger, sir. okay? So what we wanna do is train ourselves when we break that shot to hold that trigger to the rear through the recoil impulse. Mm -hmm. spot our shot and then that's when I want you to run the bolt is after you see that splash on target or you know where it's at and part of your follow-through is maintaining sight picture as much as you can through the recoil back on the target and not changing anything as that rifle recoils right that's why we keep our cheek on the gun and our eye on the optic that's correct one of the biggest issues um, in, in telltale giveaways for a new shooter is they'll take a shot and the first thing they do is they lift their head up off the look. gun to try to look with their naked eye. You have a magnified optic right there in front of your face. Let's just keep our eye behind the scope and that'll give you a better idea where that bullet's going than lifting your head up and trying to use your naked eye at 100 yards. I see it all the time at Marksman Camp. <laughs> yep. exactly what you're saying. Yep. And did you want to move your bipod? I did to that to see if when you'd tell me. <laughs> so explain to us loading the bipod. All right, uh, so many different techniques uh, for loading the bipod. So loading the bipod, some people actually try to push too hard into it, and that actually causes more of a flex. What you actually want to do is give it where it's a, a natural kind of position, and then just ever so slightly, maybe a little bit of forward pressure. Kind of like pressure. a lean with a, like just a relaxed shoulder push into it? Yep. So I personally shoot more of a neutral bipod oh, yeah? without too much of a load. Um, and why I do that is I've just found with different surfaces that I end up shooting off of, it's better for me to just try and keep the bipod as neutral as possible rather than yeah. leaning into the gun a whole lot. So next thing that I do want to cover with you guys is your firing hand grip. I don't want you to really grip that rifle real hard. I do want your hand on the grip. However, your thumb, your firing thumb, can either be off to the side or you can wrap it around. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. But what you need to be paying attention to is make sure that if you wrap your thumb around, that you're not applying a side torque onto the gun as you fire, because mm -hmm. that will translate through the recoil into point of impact deviation. So this is why a lot of people keep their thumb on the other side. You're firing three fingers down here are just applying a bit of a rear pressure, not super hard. You're not really trying to hold the gun real, real hard, but just a slight rearward pressure into your shoulder. And again, make sure that we're not applying side torque to the gun, but just a straight back pressure with our bottom three fingers. And everything that we're focused on from there on out is steady trigger press with our firing finger straight to the rear. Your trigger finger placement is perfect. How's that two-stage trigger on that Sodic rifle? Oh, I like, I love two-stage triggers. This is a nice it's break. Too. Sweet, yeah. Here we're going to um, start going live rounds. You want to go ahead and uh, throw about five rounds in your mags. And again, breathing, grip, steady pressure, trigger squeeze, follow through. Oh, same hole pretty much. I mean, it's cutting the, each other. Nice. Can't even tell. 
same hole. <laughs> very nice, dude. Nice. Good. Centered. Yeah, wow. It's very encouraging seeing such tight groups, though. Yes, absolutely. That was just a crash course version of fundamentals. But uh, is it fundamentals, I mean, it's the same with 100 yards or 1,000 yards, right? Yes, yeah, fundamentals apply, especially when you're prone, whether you're shooting just a 100-yard paper, mm -hmm. um, whether you're in a tree stand, these fundamentals still all apply, right? However, as we start working on different positions, whether we're kneeling or even standing, mm -hmm. it's just different applications of the same fundamental principles. Right, and so that will be a whole nother video is, uh, well, sh next one, hopefully what we'll do is we'll get our dope and start reaching out, and then we'll have other uh, fundamentals on, on just, we have a whole bunch of barricades and different shooting positions, but this covers the prone that most people will be what they do when they go out in the field. You don't have a good bench or whatever, and this is the most practical. Right, exactly, and one of the things to remember is that the fundamentals are not just a 10 minute course and then you're no. done with it. This is a, a constantly working on them to make sure that you're fresh and always keep those in your mind every time you shoot. It's a lifetime practice and uh, absolutely uh, constant training. Yes. So anyway, all right. So good. join us again as we continue this series in long range precision. I'm Ben, Nick, thanks for jump starting this. And uh, yeah, all right. Okay, I love you, bye-bye.